Today, I'm speaking with Mark Chalmers, the CEO of Energy Fuels Resources, and we I'm going to discuss the rare earth industry as it pertains to energy fuels resources. Uh, good morning, Mark. How, how are you doing today? Good morning, Jack. Top of the world. <laughs> okay. Actually, that's true. You're in Denver and you're, uh, I'm in Detroit. You're about, uh, oh, several thousand feet higher above sea level than I am. Anyway, exactly. in, in any case, you your company uh, was involved in a, in a news release yesterday saying that you had entered into a uh, memorandum of understanding with an Australian heavy where uh, heavy mineral sands producer Astron. And I uh, my opinion is that you are proceeding logically according to your uh, published business model for rare earths uh, to uh, create a secure supply of monocyte, the feedstock, which is which is the cornerstone of, of the system you, uh, you've designed. And so I'd like to, you to tell us what's happening with Astron and how it fits into your long-term model for being a major rare earth producer in North America. Yeah, thanks, Jack. And I'm happy to explain it. I mean, I, I think all of our investors and most of the public realize that we're building a critical mineral hub, okay, that is really based on utilizing our infrastructure and our skills and our knowledge when it comes to dealing with radioactive substances. So on the rare earth side of the business, which contains, the monazite contains uranium that we can extract at our facility and also on sale to uh, nuclear utilities for the uranium sector, um, we are securing and need to secure large quantities of monocyte to fulfill those objectives of that strategy. So, so really this MOU, which is non-binding currently, we still have to do the due diligence, is a major step in securing material quantities of monocyte, assuming everything comes out in the due diligence for decades, like 40 or 50 years. Um, and, and potentially um, gives us enough feed source to produce around uh, between one and a half to 2,000 tons of NDPR, which to put it in context is about one third of what Linus is currently doing. So it, it's uh, very material for us. It complements our current core business of uranium mining and processing perfectly, perfectly. And I think people have a hard time understanding that sometimes. So, so it's a step. Um, we're, we're finishing up the phase one uh, separation capabilities at the mill in the first quarter. And we're very excited about that. There'll be more news flow on that regard. And um, so we're trying to break the mold. Somebody has to run forward in a logical way, as you said, particularly in what well, the rare earths and uranium business to actually produce things in time. And that's what our company is all about. Uh, I, I'd like to point out to the audience that two or 3,000 tons of NDPR would be enough to make approximately 10,000 tons of rare earth permanent magnets, which would happen to be about what the United States imports today from China just for current internal combustion engine production. So uh, no one else is anywhere near this, this level. And, and I congratulate Energy Fuels for, for taking on this project. And, and I realize that right now it's secondary to your primary business, which is the production of uranium. But in fact, monazite does contain some uranium. And I and so it's it's added value. And rather and it's actually to me a genius move because it it rather than extracting uranium from uh, monocyte and discarding it you're you're taking that residue and making it a strong payable so this this to me is a win-win for any business model and i congratulate you mark well, thank you jack and and again i um um i think that's one thing that you know some people don't completely fully understand is um the the, the scale and the magnitude of this bolt-on rare earths um, that we're, we're, we're focused on as the bolt-on 
when the prices of rare earths are lower, when there are acquisition opportunities right now in the rare earth business, where there are very few acquisition opportunities in the uranium business, it fits perfectly with our strategy of diversification and be able to be strong uh, where we need to be strong. So, um, yeah, I, the scale is significant. It's material. Um, we are the front runner, particularly in North America on that front. And, um, and, and, and we plan to be a world significant in all things critical elements uh, while producing uranium. And our uranium plans are full tilt right now. We've got we've we've hired about 60 or 70 miners are underground. They're breaking rock all to be processed at the White Mesa Mill, as will the monazite uh, for the rare earth strategy. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, I I really can't add anything to that. Uh, it, it's it's difficult to overemphasize the fact that you are the premier producer of uranium in the United States. Uranium is extremely in demand today, as uh, many people have figured out that the best non-carbon source of energy production is nuclear. And you're in the spotlight there. And I again, I congratulate you for finding a way to, it, I, I'm sorry to use this analogy, but it's, it's like a pork packer. You, they say, well, we use everything but the squeak, but you're actually also using the squeak. So there, everything is, is becoming a payable. Everything in, in coming into White Mesa is going out as a payable. Again, I can't think of a, a better business model. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. And, and we are trying to get the squeak for all the right reasons uh, in this area of energy transition elements uh, for the future. Thank you very much. I appreciate the interview.